there was time there was no food. The other kids at school had new things, new clothes, and we didn't have that. 14, I worked at a summer camp. 15, 16, I worked at fast food places. I lived in Greece. I lived in New Zealand. I lived in Australia. I lived in Germany. I lived in London. I lived in Singapore. I lived in Thailand. Someone once told me that love comes in waves. Recently, I started learning that you can actually have a diet for your menstrual cycle. Don't try to be the prettiest girl. Who cares? Be the smartest girl. That's going to win you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Because what do they say? You're not ugly. You're only poor. Hi, Nargis. Hi. Thank you for doing this. And you look lovely. And Thank I'm you. very excited to chat with you. Thanks. You look lovely too. I've seen so many of your interviews and you're super candid. So I'm very excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get too excited because it's really late in the day. Yeah. Like, you know, when you're, your guard is down late in the day. So this, no. This interview, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not. It's not. Okay. My guard is always down. Okay. Yeah. It's but now down. it's like sleepy time. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. But go. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> so, um, you were a 16 year old girl. We love our research at Humans of Bombay. So we've, yeah. We've well, uh, let me just inform you the research that you do mm. is not correct. But okay. I'm not trying to correct anything. So, no, not at all. Yeah, don't give a shit about the internet because the internet has a lot of things that are not yeah. real because yeah. people just add their own stuff. I yeah. mean, this is so relevant in my life today, more yeah. than ever. <laughs> yeah, so I can already stop you at that, but go ahead. Yeah. Continue so, as your research, research which is yeah. not research. Yeah. But. As a 16-year-old girl who wanted to travel the world, okay. uh, to now, you know, um, having had the career and the journey that you've had, yeah. what is it that brought you here? What is the one thing that you think brought you here? No, I didn't have a set plan or mm. a set path. Right to be here or anywhere. Hmm. I just lived my life very freely and open to experiences and adventure. And yeah, that's what brought me here. I think when I was very young, I wanted to be a veterinarian, like an okay, yeah, animal yeah, doctor, because yeah, yeah. I loved animals so much. Um, and then I think in my teenage years, I wanted to be a fashion designer because hmm. I loved making my own clothes. And uh, then later in life, I became a model at one point because everyone said I should because I was tall and pretty and yeah. skinny. Yeah. And then I realized that's such a great job to travel the world. I also want to travel the world because my mother instilled traveling mm. inside of me. And then, yeah, it just went from there. But no, here I am. Yeah. Uh, whatever I am, a human here. A human. <laughs> you, you're, you had a, you know, you grew up in, uh, you were born in New York. Yeah. Uh, and then you obviously, you know, we're, we're sitting in Bombay today. A huge part of your career has been based yeah. here. Um, but your formative years were, were challenge, would have been challenging. Again, we, we pose this as a question because research. Um, your, your parents separated when, when you were very young. Mm. Uh, what kind of impact did that have on you in those formative years, you know, which define how you kind of progress into your teens and eventually as an adult? I mean, for anyone who doesn't have a proper family unit, for sure it affects the children. Because I think now as an adult uh, that has processed everything and understands human psychology more and understands myself, that uh, children need a male and female figure in their yeah. life. Because, you know, uh, mom and dad teach different things. So I think definitely it had an effect what kind of effect? Well, I know my mom instilled education and financial independence and don't depend on a man and to do your own thing. So here I am today. I'm financially independent. I do whatever I want. No one could tell me anything. Mm -hmm. Hence, I'm not married yet and I don't have children <laughs> because no, no one's going to tell me what to do. Right. I dictate what I want done and what I'm going to do in my life. And so that's the way I lived. Maybe if I had the father figure, it might be different. Who knows? Yeah. You know? So, I, well, these are positive things, I think, Yeah. that I've gained. From, so from I, that experience. From that experience. Right, right. Now that I look at it. Yeah. I mean, as a young person, I think uh, a single mom trying to take care of two kids in a foreign land, because that was a foreign land mm -hmm. for her, all alone, and having to 
go to school and have a job because you have to learn English and stuff. That part was hard because there was no, um, I don't want to say discipline. Yeah, there was no discipline, really. Yeah. And I can do whatever I wanted to do. Hmm. And I think I had to grow up a little faster. Like I learned how to cook things like at 10 or 11, Yeah. you know, whether yeah. it was like craft macaroni and cheese from a box, I can put the step there and I can cook it myself. And then just being more of an adult at a younger age. Hmm. So that might not be a good thing. For, yeah. You know, a kid should get the chance to be a kid. kid yeah, experience a child. Yeah. yeah. So I think that part is the not so great part hmm. when you have a single parent. Yeah. 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 So while, while growing up, was that a motivating factor for you to be financially independent? Like, you know, I definitely need to make money uh, in my life given that you saw this part of life where there was, uh, you know, there was a um, bit of a, like, there was a lot of hustle from your mother's end, right? Mm. To, to, to pull you guys through this. So was right. that a motivator? Yeah, also the fact that we didn't have a lot of things. I mean, there was time, there was no food. Really? So, yeah. like, that also plays a big part. And then also times where the other kids at school had new things, new clothes, and we didn't have that. So that is also all of those things that make a person decide, oh, this is really important. Yeah. So you learn quick that you need money to survive. So I remember at 12, 13, I'm going to the grocery store and I would like, a few of us, like friends would do this. We'd bag the groceries. They would let us do, do it. And we'd help the older people to their car or bag their stuff. And they'd give us like 25 cents, 50 cents. So we'd... Do that, make yeah. a little bit of money and we can go get pizza or a drink or a candy or whatever. Because obviously parents couldn't really afford to give any extra money for anything else. And then I also worked. I got a regular job. I was like 15, 14. 14, I worked at a summer camp. 15, 16, I worked at fast food places. So I always had a job. Hmm. So yes, money was very important due to those circumstances. And even to this day, it does not leave me. That's the one thing... I realized about who I am today, I don't spend a lot of money. I don't need a lot of things. I'm very simple. People who know me, they laugh because I'm so simple. Yeah. Like I don't want anything except for healthy food and I like to travel. That's it. But when it comes to like clothes and bags or fancy things, I don't care too much for that. So I actually don't need to work so much. But then there's this thing inside of you where you're like, oh, I never want to go back. To that life yeah so then you never stop working even yeah. though you don't have to really work you don't have to push so much does that make sense yeah yeah, because yeah. you have enough and yeah. how much do you really need to be honest no, like, yeah because you've just seen that life you, yeah you've yeah. seen that and you and that kind of just sits inside of you a bit yeah yeah so that's an interesting thing I discovered yeah obviously one thing that was life-changing for you was when you discovered modeling and that that you know that's something that kind of shaped everything after um what was that experience like um i think with the modeling thing the time that i started no one really wanted girls that looked like me hmm. yeah it was all about the blonde hair blue eyed or really i mean i'm white compared to everybody here hmm. but back in the day i was a little more tan i don't know why i'm so white now <laughs> but uh and then you know the features dark features, dark eyes, dark hair, that was not really in. Okay. So I think it was a bit of a struggle in the beginning, but then there came the explosion of like the Brazilian models. Hmm. So then people were like into the exotic yeah. look, which was great because then I was able to work more because I was, oh, now Brazilian or Latin American. Yeah. They just, you know, yeah. throw me wherever I fit in, which is also something I enjoy that you can't tell what I am. Hmm. I've done... Uh, commercials and modeling jobs for different cultures which right. is really nice yeah so yeah did it shape it shaped my i mean it, it brought me to where i am today so yeah hmm. and i wanted to travel the world yeah so how do you travel the world and still make money that's hmm. a big thing hmm. and so i figured oh wow i can just pick any country that has modeling go there get an agency and try to work yeah and that's what i did yeah yeah, yeah. So when from the from this time, right, when you got this into modeling yeah. to about the time Rockstar came out, there's there's this there's this really funny 
interesting anecdote we came about where you said that you lived in a haunted house in Bombay. There's snippets and snatches of information, right? Yeah. Between that's... between these two these two periods in your life. Yeah. So what was that like? You know, when you went to the haunted house. No. Oh. When you finally you know made it to Rockstar, the the journey that led up to that. Because it's very little about that period. Nothing. What is there? The like. What do you mean? When it finally led up to Rockstar, I traveled around the world. I had the best life ever. No, like how did you? How did it finally happen? Someone sent me an email, mm. and they just asked me to come audition. Yeah. And then I wrote back and I said, uh, "What are you talking about? Who are you?" Then they said, "Oh, director would like to meet you. Here's the location." And I wrote back. I was like, "I don't live in India, and I'm not Indian, and I live in Denmark, so I don't understand why you're contacting me." Then they wrote back, "Oh, sorry, thought you were an Indian model, and the director wanted to meet you." Then I just wrote back, "No, I'm not. I live in uh, Denmark, and I'm a model, and I'm part Pakistani and Czech. But no, I don't speak the language. I don't know anything about India. Blah blah blah. Fine, cool. A couple weeks later, oh, the director's going to be in Czech Republic, Prague. He still would like to meet you if you're interested. So I did research." And I saw he was legit. And anyway, that's my mom's country. So I said, I'll just go over and mm. meet this person. And if he's weird, I'll kick him really hard and run. And if he's not, who knows, you know, because mm. this could be interesting. So I go there and I meet the director and he tells me an amazing story. And then the next day I met him for lunch and we're chatting. And he asked, would you like to come to India and give this a try? We can like try to get you like a tutor and some acting lessons and see if this can work. So I didn't say yes, and a couple weeks went by, and I said, "Okay, you know what? I should just go and try. This could be a cool new adventure." And before all this happened, if you must know, I was having, I guess it's called an existential crisis. Is that mm. what it is when you're trying to figure out who are you, why are you here, what is life? You know that type yeah. of feeling. Who am I? You know, I'm American. I grew up in New York. I don't know my heritage mm. at all, and you're like not feeling like you fit in anywhere because you're neither here or there. You don't fit in any group of people. Mm. So, anyways, when I had prayed to God about knowing that, like a year later, this email came. Mm. So, how weird is that? That the director that sent the email or his assistant that sent the email wants to meet me, he's going to be shooting a movie in my mom's country and in Kashmir and North India, which would be the closest I could get to my dad's country. Mm -hmm. So when they asked me to do it, I just thought about that. I said, what a great opportunity for me to get to know me, Yeah. get to know my dad, get to know my mom, because my mom never talked about her culture. She didn't instill any of her culture within me because i think when you're an immigrant coming to america you want to be as Mer as american, american as, possible. as possible i don't know if you've seen english of english yeah when i watched that i thought about my mom yeah. you know i was like oh this like is so relatable like i yeah. see my mom mm. in shri Devi's character so then i said yes because of that and of course i'm a person who loves new adventure Obviously, it was not very difficult for me to live in a new country because prior to that, I lived in Greece, I lived in New Zealand, I lived in Australia, I lived in Germany, I lived in London, I lived in Singapore, I lived in Thailand. So it wasn't so hard to just move. And I was actually quite excited to get to, new, get to know a new place mm. and a new culture. Mm. So that's it. And then I said yes. And then I spent the first year... Uh, it took two years, by the way, for Rockstar to come out. Hmm. I spent the first couple of months in Lokanvala, <laughs> which was a very interesting experience. Yeah. Definitely different from any place I've been in the world. <laughs> Lokanvala is its own vibe and its own space. And I used to go to an office here somewhere on Thierry. I forgot where it was, across from Infinity Mall. Hmm. There's an office there. And I would sit in a cubicle for hours and hours a day trying to learn my lines, the language, get a hang of the sounds and words and memorizing other people's dialogues, memorizing the whole script. Just spent that whole six, seven months like that mm. until we started shooting. 
So when you did start shooting, did you get that 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 feeling of oh this is what I'm meant to do? No. No. I was like after this I'm going, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. I said I'm not going to be here. Every year I said I'm leaving. Yeah. Yeah, I was never going to stay here. Yeah. But it's 12 years later I'm still here. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um Yeah, I kept saying, yeah, this is a project and then I'll just go because mm-hmm. I was so used to moving around so much. Yeah. It didn't there's there was no place that I was planning to ever stay. Hmm. And and work-wise, if you know my personality, it didn't mean so much to me because I can work anywhere. And I didn't know what acting would be like or what fame is like mm-hmm. I didn't know I didn't have any expectations and I didn't anticipate anything does that make sense yeah. I just went with the childlike wonderment of exploring something new and learning something new so it was all very uh challenging yet exciting there was ups and downs but life my life anyway was very chaotic so I was used to chaos anyway so I, it was okay it was normal and then when Rockstar came out that was a whole nother ball game. Yeah. So is that like a double edged sword, right? Because you get the fame obviously yeah. that comes with starring in yeah. in this film, but then you're also scrutinized for yes. something that you you never knew from the very beginning, which yes. is acting. Yes, And you yes. never you never saw that for But yourself. even the lifestyle is so different from the life I would want to live. Does in that terms make sense? of in like I always said if I can make money like a lot of money and no one knows who I am, I don't care. Yeah. I don't want the I fame. never wanted yeah to be known. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I don't feel very comfortable in that like where you don't have your anonymity, is that the right word? Yeah. Where everyone knows what underwear you're wearing or they're curious like what like I they just want to know everything. Yeah. So it feels like you have no privacy. Yeah. So that doesn't feel very nice. What is like looking back at that experience obviously life altering experience of yeah. shooting a film like that yes, yes. so iconic a film um what some of the special memories while shooting with either the director or your co-star and be anything that you still remember you know, Yeah like you know time? there's no other film that I've done that could be compared to this one yeah also how we worked together all of us and of course the newness of it and the challenges and obstacles i faced uh but also the group of people i worked with you know everyone's different mm-hmm. and these people that i worked with were really i don't know what word to use but they were so good at making me feel comfortable and at home and they're very, like great caretakers uh and how they worked their mm-hmm. skill mm-hmm. you know my co-actor is really talented and i never felt the pressure from him even if i couldn't deliver a dialogue he never once flinched yeah it was as if everything was fine all the time he stood that good and he would deliver so well so i didn't even have to worry if i messed up because his deliver everything was just it just flowed i don't yeah. know it's, yeah i don't know how it worked but it worked and the director his technique on directing me was so different mm-hmm. i can say that now because i worked with different people and it's like he knew what he had to do to bring out that character the character yeah. and they created an environment that helped mm. me flourish mm. and to be that character yeah so this is a once in a lifetime thing yeah. i mean i would be so grateful god if i got a second opportunity <laughs> to work like this and do something like this with these techniques that that this director and my co-actor like yeah. how they worked with me together yeah it's really a blessing like so nice. <laughs> and what was your thought process after, right? Cuz Rockstar happened. It's like we mentioned it was so iconic. Yeah. Was there like okay, this is my plan now or were you yeah, still Yeah, no, I was still leaving. <laughs> yeah, you're still like okay, I'm done. I was still leaving and actually a person who's my friend till this day she told me don't leave. Hmm. Don't leave. This is like people would die to be in your position. Yeah. But I was like I didn't know any better. Yeah. I was just like oh like they would die to be in my position. And then also financially the the movie took 2 years and I couldn't work so financially I had an issue again. Yeah. So I actually had no choice. Mm. And then work came so fast and so much that you sort of get sucked in 
to working that you can't even find a way out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because there was, so I got an agency and then from that day on, there was, there was never a day off. It was so crazy. I'm telling you, if they would like, if there was a day off, all I could do was stare at the fan spinning. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I'm just going to like, just stay here. Yeah. <laughs> because you're so tired and yes, you're working so yeah. much. Yeah. And uh, personally, I don't think I've ever experienced this much work in my life. It's, it was just so yes, much, yeah. so overwhelming. Every day, something. I remember flying to a city to do an event and then right after going to another city. Mm. I, flew, I, I flew more times than there are days in a month. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Which is not healthy. Yeah. Like, it's not okay to yeah. be doing that. Yeah. And then every year that I was leaving, something amazing would happen or another film. So I'm like, oh, I can't leave. Let me just do this. And then <laughs> I'll leave. Yeah. And then you never leave until the day comes where you have no choice but to leave. Mm. Where you're so sick from overworking that your body is giving up on you. Yeah. That basically there's no choice. You have to go take a break. Yeah. Yeah. And as you went, you know, from from film to film, uh, the one thing that any public figure, it doesn't matter who you are, is mm. subject to criticism. A lot of it. Um, what, how, how did that kind of shape your, who you were as a person? I think that... That's, it's a good question. I never really... I don't think I've ever said this, but... It really messes with your mental health yeah. and your self-esteem. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, as a child and growing up, I was always very different. Uh, and now I see as an adult, I'm different in a unique and good way. And your uniqueness is important. But when you come to a new place, a society that is different from your society, a culture that's different from your culture, I didn't understand that they wouldn't understand me. Yeah. And I didn't understand uh, that I would get scrutinized so much. And then obviously being in the limelight, extra scrutiny because people love to talk shit about people. And I know that negative news sells better than positive news because we don't see today the guy saved a cat from the tree or saved the old lady's life. No, we see this person's having an affair yeah. and beat someone in a murder and this and that. We don't see good news. Yeah. We see headlines of bad news every day some reason I don't know why would you read everything like initially so in the beginning it, yeah. I didn't even read but I remember there was an article and people were messaging me because it said my mom came to Bombay and that I'm moving in with another actor yeah, yeah I'm not gonna name names but no, this yeah. article and someone said oh your mom's in town that's so great because they read the newspaper I'm like my mom has never been to this country <laughs> and I don't think she's coming anytime soon so yeah. so those are the things that for me were so absurd yeah but no matter what, it was it's hurtful to you because you feel like people who don't know you are judging you based on what other people are saying who don't even know you either. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then you are feeling weird and bad and not good because you're knowing that so many people are reading this, but they're reading stuff that's not real or they're reading such negative things about, about you. you. And it makes you, it just makes you feel bad and yeah. because nobody knows the hard work that you put in. Nobody knows everything you went through and maybe they don't care. Actually, that's what I realized. They just care about this. They just aspect. care about this part and what people want to say, Yeah, which kind of sucks because like they just want the end result. Mm. They don't care the hard work, like people who want to be skinny and fit. They don't care that this person has to eat right, sleep early, wake up. They don't hang out with their friends. They don't drink. They don't do all bad stuff. They're like fully regimented and like disciplined to get that body. Yeah. They think, oh, all of a sudden you can get it. No, it's fucking hard work yeah. to, to be in that position or whatever position. Mm. Good body, good mental health. Even mental health, we have to practice every day. No? Yeah. Every day. Yes. Uh, so, so you're going to cry about something? No, you better pick yourself back up and, you know, be grateful for everything you have. Yeah. So that was a realization too. Like I got sad and stuff, but I'm like, you know what? Also, I can't get sad because humans are fickle as well. One minute they love you, one minute they hate you. One minute they talk great, one minute they talk shit. It's so confusing. So then one day you just give up. You're like, forget it. I'm not talking. I don't want to see forget anything. It. it doesn't matter. Know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. Nothing matters. Yeah. Nothing matters. Only you matter. And your mental health and your peace and your physical health. Yeah. 
But yes, it does affect people. I think in the beginning,、mm-hmm. maybe it affects people even throughout their whole career. But not me. I'm like, I put a roadblock. <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> this is not me. Not happening here, buddy. I don't care. So I have an interesting follow up question to what we what you just said, right? Like there is a there is a notion or there is an expectation of women, especially in this industry,、Lord. to be very. Put together yes, all the time. Please don't get me started on and that. And look a certain way. <laughs> don't even get me started on that subject. Yes, you are right. There is, but and you, I hate it. But did you? And I think that it should take it and shove it up there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, right, right. You girl behind there, you know what we're gonna do? Pajama party. That's it. <laughs> we're not putting on makeup no more. We're not wearing、yeah. fake hair no more. We're not wearing high heels no more. Yeah. When is it gonna end? But it's not gonna end. Because you're right. Yeah, because they have those expectations, and we as women, not even as a celebrity, not only as a celebrity, but you too. Yeah, you too, and and even these girls that they don't see, they're working in an office, but they're expected to, to look, look a, a certain, certain way. way. Yeah, yeah. You've also been very vo- vocal about the fact that a lot of rules, female-centric rules here, have to do with the sexual aspect of it, but. Since OTT, especially,、um, there are a lot of female-centric narratives that are very meaty, right? Like there, there's substance. There's、yes. there's more than what meets the eye. Like it's more than the makeup,、yes. more than how I look and how good I look.、Um, so, what's your opinion on the evolution? I'm so、process? happy. COVID really changed things, and I think because so many people were at home consuming so quickly. That they needed more content, so then now they were like, "Oh my God, let's just take everything we can get." And actually, finally, good stuff was coming out. Yeah. Because、uh, I think that I mean I could be wrong. I'm no specialist at anything, but there is a、uh, formula that people followed to have a blockbuster film.、Mm. Am I correct? Yeah. Like you do- yeah, you have to have this actor, and you have to have this person, and the story should be like this, and it should look like this. And then, boom! You have a hit. Yeah. So it be just became like a repeat, I guess, of certain things. But with OTT, you got more variety, and they were able maybe to push the limits、uh, on the content. The formula. Yeah, the formula, yeah. Or yeah. what they're talking about, which is great. I think is great. It gave a lot of、uh, people more jobs. Yeah. And a lot of interesting content. A lot of talent jobs. Yeah. People yeah. that maybe we wouldn't have seen on the big. Screen for whatever reason now they have a a,、yeah. a place a platform to showcase their talent. Yeah, it's been like a level up. Yeah,、sorts. it's great. Yeah. It's awesome. I love that.、Mm. So you once said,、um, "I'm an independent, educated woman.、Hmm? I make my own money, take care of my mom, and I'm single, so I can do whatever I can, <laughs> whatever I want." <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that's your definition of empowerment? And how can How can this impact on? That's、government? really interesting, and like, I know here in India, everyone's always telling women, "Oh, you have to get married before this age,、mm. and have kids before this age." And now, as I'm growing up, and I'm an adult, <laughs> <laughs> those words rang true, and they still do. But I also know that being in a relationship or having a marriage—I mean, marriage—I don't really care about long-term partner. Let's say. Uh, or marriage, whatever you want to call it, is really、uh, an important part of everyone's lives.、Mm-hmm. But with the right person, I don't think people should be, you know, getting married and having a family with the wrong person because that's very detrimental to people's health and stuff and the children's health. Yeah. So I think also that rings true, and I think people should Educate themselves as I have been educating myself on human behavior, personality, my own personality.、Uh, educating myself about self awareness. I don't、mm. know if that's the right way to say it. Like, I read a lot of self help books. I listen to doctor podcasts、mm. on human psychology and relationships because, in the end. Yes, I'm single, but it would be nice to spend the rest of my life with someone. Yeah. So, but that takes work on my part, like to be a better communicator, to have boundaries, to have compassion and understanding, and also make sure I'm choosing the right person that has the same qualities. Yeah. So I would add that yes, those ones except the single part. You don't want to be single. 
<laughs> until your older age, it's yeah. nice to have a partner. Yeah. So I might change that. Mm. But independent, financially independent and educated and even continuing to get educated on other things subjects. that yeah, yeah, other subjects are very important. Yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, cuz I'm all about like those statements are really important, mm-hmm. especially for women uh because I realized coming to India that a lot of women get stuck in a marriage and with kids and then they don't have an education and they don't have financial independence. And then even if they don't want to be there, even if they're getting abused, you can't leave. they can't leave because they have nowhere to go. Yeah. Uh, and that's a horrible place to be. Yeah. And I've, you know, not that I've seen that. I've seen stuff in my life, let's just say that. Yeah. And I've seen that a woman... You know, of course, she will struggle if she breaks away because it is hard for a single mom to break away. But if you're in a bad space, mental, physical abuse, you should not be with that yeah. person. Yeah. And the thing that can help you is your education and finances. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your perception of love now that you've had this? Oh, it's so interesting. It's changed. You yeah. know, I was always a curious person. Since I was very young, I'd be in the Barnes & Noble self-help section. And I love to ask questions. So I actually do not like being interviewed because I hate talking so much because I could talk a lot. Mm. But I like to ask other people questions Mm. because I'm a curious person. And I used to ask all the older people who are married, divorced, single, like so many questions on relationships. Someone once told me that love comes in waves. So sometimes you're married and it will it will be there like the beginning is so amazing and then it goes away and you just don't care about the person yeah. but then as time goes on you again the love comes again and and through that relationship the long term one it changes mm. so love is comes in different forms cycles. i guess or cycles yeah it's hard to explain and then when you talk about love there's that love where it's like chemical romance because it's all the hormones that kick in and that's that lusty love and then there's love later that's the friendship love the more calm love or the par- you know your parents the love that you have for your parents or your siblings or friends so there's all kinds of love i mean the ultimate love what is it loving yourself because when you love yourself and you're happy with yourself you can give so much to others yeah yeah what is nargis in love like how is how is love for you you know as you get older it changes because you become more logical hmm. does that make sense yeah uh like it's not about the butterflies and it should be some should be there but not too much just like <laughs> listen there's a there's a formula there <laughs> there is a formula if you're too butterfly too crazy it's not the one run away yeah. You got to have like a balance, balance of feeling comfort and stability, like almost feel like home, yet with a little bit of butterflies. Mm. Because you can't be dating your best friend or brother. So you don't want that. You know what I mean? You can't be dating your brother. Yeah. I should say that. Yeah. Cuz that's like home feeling. But you do want someone that is secure, that makes you feel secure, that doesn't play games and centered. You know, yeah, centered. So they should be stable, you should be stable. And there should be some butterflies, which is the attraction, right? Right, because right. that's what that kind of love should be. Mm. Yeah, because you can't be so like, mm. you can't be bored. <laughs> like, yeah, you have a little spice there, a little spice. And how is it having to deal with, say, a new relationship or a breakup, given the public scrutiny? When it's actually true, right? When there's speculation, that's fine. That's for people to. But either or speculation or not speculation, it's. I mean, whatever. I don't even care anymore. But it's annoying when that mm. becomes the forefront of everything. Mm. Imagine you have work coming out and they don't talk about anything else but that, but your relationship. Yeah. That is where it gets stupid and annoying because the work is important. Yeah. Not this other stuff. Yeah. But unfortunately, people love gossip and, like I said, the negative stuff. So whether true or false, they're making something. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what is the infatuation with all that because I was never like that. Yeah. You know, I was never a human that was interested in gossip or hearing about shit. Or like negative stuff. Anything. I don't even care. I don't care. People tell me stuff about themselves and other people. I don't care. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Unless you need help and you're telling me about you and you need some advice, then talk to me. But I don't care about people I don't know. Yeah. I don't care 
what they said, what they did, who they dated. I don't care. It doesn't pay my bills. It's not, I have so much stuff in my brain. I don't need junk. junk. It's like eating Kit Kats and Skittles and gummy bears. I don't want that. I want to have a healthy, clean body. Don't give me that shit. Talk to me about something else, the latest technology or healthcare uh, innovations. Uh, teach me something. Mm. I don't need that kind of talk. That is a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> Let me read an article that actually changes my life. Yeah. It gives me a new perspective. It gives me a new perspective. Yeah. Like our conversations, maybe I'm sharing a piece of my life, but then tell you what I learned about it. Hopefully someone else could be like, oh shit, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. True. That's yeah. great. I should have thought about that. Mm. Yeah, food for thought, mm. not junk food, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me a green juice, not gummy bears. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happened to me. But I've always been like that. Yeah. This is my personality. Yeah, that's great. I want, I want, I want... Uh, you want soul stuff. Yeah, I don't want quantity. I want the quality. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what's next? You've had... So, like, I, I, you're very, um, you know, like, you, you, the travel, you've lived in so many different places, so you've had so many different experiences. Yeah. So, it's so interesting to know what's next. Like, I don't know. What, if what I, I always say if I die tomorrow, I'm happily dead. <laughs> I'm happily dead. I've done everything. Yeah. Yeah, I have a full, I have created for myself a really full life. And despite my childhood being really rough, I love that now because I see two sides of the coin. Hmm. So I have a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy. Yeah. Oh, like empathy through the roof. It's a disaster sometimes mm -hmm. because I know what it feels like to be in all these different places. Yeah. I have so much understanding of different things and humans and my own self. Mm -hmm. So what's now? What's next? I mean, I'm here in Mumbai. And I have a, oh yeah, my debut, I keep forgetting to talk about this. I, I'm debuting on streaming, oh, on a streaming team. thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like everybody else. Yeah. So that's very exciting. That's it's, exciting. It's called Tatlu Baz. Yeah. And uh, the character is very different. The storyline I loved, I hope everyone loves it. I, when I received the episodes, I read it in one shot, like so fast, because mm -hmm. I wanted to get to the next. You wanted uh, to know more. Next episode, yeah. You know, you watch something and then you binge watch because you just can't stop because you need to know what's happening. So it was like that, but reading. Yeah. And the character is very different. Uh, she is from Benares. I mean, I love that I got to wear a lot of saris. Mm. So that's like that's one of amazing. my favorite yeah. parts. I love saris. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I worked with a great group of people. We had lots of laughs. It was quite difficult for me. So I haven't seen any rushes. So I don't know what it's going to look like, but... The storyline and everybody's amazing in it. Yeah. So and and the character is so not me. And some of the dialogues that she says, like everyone was just laughing when they would hear me say it because it's it's vocabulary I would never say. <laughs> so it was very cool, mm. very cool, very different character. Totally not me. So I loved playing something so different, which kind of was hard, but it was good. So. Yeah, amazing. Okay, we're going to go to the next segment. It's okay. called Things We Couldn't Find About You on Google. Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> Google them. Yes, yeah, a lot of stuff, but I don't know if I want to share with you. But okay, let's see. <laughs> okay. Go. Who's your biggest inspiration in Bollywood? In Li Bollywood? Yeah, living or dead? So, this is a problem. I don't... The inspiration and... My inspiration... To be honest, I never had inspiration. Yeah, because it was so thrown at you. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't grow up here and it was thrown at me and I was scrambling to find my way. And I cannot have inspiration from someone here because no one's lived my life. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I come from another country, another culture. Mm. Uh, if anybody, maybe I could say Katrina Kaff. Yeah. Yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah. I could say her because she, me knowing how everything works and how crazy it can be from, for someone from another country, for a person to be here for so many years and really get a handle on everything here and become so successful mm. and her family's, I don't know, they doesn't seem to be here and maybe her friends were not here either. So she really made it and yeah. she's like left, I mean, she's icon. It's she's a legacy. Iconic. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. she, it's be Definitely. weird to say that, but yeah, yeah, I could say her. <laughs> what do you do in your days off? These days, what I do in my days off? Oh Lord, it's so boring. <laughs> I love to cook. Wow. I love to uh, read. I, I tend to read the National Library of Medicine. 
Wow. I watch a lot of podcasts about doctors telling us about all the different herbs and vitamins uh, that are good for us. I watch a lot of things about nutrition. Recently, I started learning that you can actually have a diet for your menstrual cycle. Wow. Yes. That's so interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. The funniest thing a troll has ever said about you. If I say this to y'all, <laughs> I want to say this so bad. I'm going to say this. You I'm going to say this. I'm sorry to all the aunties and uncles who are watching. I'm very sorry. Somebody wrote, I want to f*** your thigh. <laughs> sorry, these are your people's out here. You're some crazy people. <laughs> that is so random. That is so random. That is so random. Like chicken thigh, what thigh? <laughs> like what you want? Like, sorry, that is so bad. I'm so sorry. But these are the things that you see. Yeah. The internet is sick. It's sick. Your favorite OTT series. In India. So I don't, yeah, I haven't watched one lately, uh, but I was recommended a few. Do you recommend one? Yeah, I just watched uh, Bombay Mary John. It was. Oh, yeah, someone else. Met, yes, okay, okay. It someone else amazing. just told me that. Yeah, okay, yeah. So like maybe I'll put that. That was like binge. Like I, okay. I did not do anything else. Yeah. yeah, I get nervous with those OTT series because I have a binging issue. Yeah. And the other night I'm watching a show called The Preacher. And I was so tired, but I watched seven episodes. Yeah, this is I didn't that. get to sleep. You can't, you can't. And my, my one eye was like this. <laughs> I did not want to close this eye. One <laughs> eye was closed, one eye was open. And the computer, because I watched it on my computer, yeah. it was like half closed. Because I'm like, please, let it just shut so I can sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what is it? Mumbai? Bombay Mirija. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that amazing. on the list. Amazing. Fantastic. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so we're yeah. done. For the oh, last, amazing. The last question. Oh, last question. Yeah. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we at the we're at the winning line. Yeah. <laughs> the final stretch. <laughs> Oh my God. So you've been so bold and feel, fearless in so many of your choices, right? Like um, you Life know, choices too. Life choices, yeah. the experiences you've had, the, mm. the criticism you've taken in your stride. And From life, everyone, even family, yeah, yeah, even friends. Yeah, like, and, and live life on your own terms yes. um, in every way and every sense of the word. Um, but there are so many young girls who struggle with exactly that, the things yeah. that you've managed to do. So what advice would you give them? Oh my lord, with young girls? I don't know you young girls these days. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I mean, in America, it seems to be out of control. <laughs> India is still maybe not so out of control. I mean, that's hard. I think about that. You yeah. know, sometimes I'm scared to have kids because I'm like, oh my gosh, the world is crazy. Mm. So what advice would I give? Man, self-love? Like love yourself, have respect for yourself, hold yourself in a higher regard. Don't try to fit in with groups of people that maybe might not be good for you. Like yeah. don't do things just to fit in. Yeah. Cause that could get you into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So, and definitely respecting yourself yeah. is a big deal, which respect and love, loving yourself is respecting yourself. Yeah. You're, you are a special person. Don't just give yourself to everybody. That's including like friends. You don't have to be everyone's friend, you know? Yeah. You don't have to do what everyone is doing. Like I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I got ridiculed and like, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up because I stayed away from yeah. those groups, those gangs of friends. But it got me to where I am today because yeah. I stayed away from those people. Mm. And that was hard as a kid. Like you don't have so many friends because you don't want to do the bad things that they're doing. Yeah. or the certain things that they're up to you're not you don't want to be a part of that mm. yeah so don't get suckered into that that's good advice yeah, yeah. and education and finances that's it <laughs> save your money don't buy stupid shit yeah. yeah so important yeah yeah don't try to be the prettiest girl who cares be the smartest girl that's going to win you in the long run yeah yeah because what do they say you're not ugly you're only poor <laughs> and that's a sign off from right here yeah. truth yeah, no, that's yeah. a perfect ending to... That was a hard, that was a meme, by the way. <laughs> you know, ugly, you're only yeah. poor. Yeah, because like study, make your money, save your money, 
You don't feel pretty when you're young. It's okay. Save it for when you're older because you're going to need it because we all age. Mm. And actually, after your 30s is when you really need to be doing your skincare and all. I mean, obviously, hygiene is important, but the makeup, the dresses, because things change for women. They change. So save all your money for after 30. (laughs) That's my (laughs) advice. Keep compound FDs. Yeah. Secure FDs. Please start right away. If you're 10 years old and you you made 100 rupees, put it in an FD. (laughs) Start now. Start young. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for the time. And Thank you. I've really enjoyed the conversation, oh, both great. Um, in the interview and offline. Okay, amazing. So, yeah, awesome. Because I'm awesome. Don't you forget it. <laughs> Thank you. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Thank you all for being the best community and I'll see you soon.